Hello everybody. In this video, I want to look at a concept in Druid that I think is really one of the most important concepts. And it's also something that gives Druid a lot of its speed. The concept is called Rollup, and it's a way of storing your data that optimizes your query speed and reduces how much data you actually have to store. Let's look at it through the visual data loader. So I'm going to start a new spec here. And you can follow this at home um, on your own. I'm going to just use the example Wikipedia data set. And I'm going to just click next on every single uh, page here until I get to the configure schema step. So this is a step where you configure your schema, which is exactly what will appear inside of Druid when you ingest data. This is also the step where you would configure your rollup, and there is the rollup indicator right here. I will spend a lot of time talking about this. If you scroll from left to right, you will see the same thing that will appear in a preview of the same thing that will appear in your Druid cluster once you finish ingesting this data. If I turn rollup off, which is rollup is on by default because it's such an important feature. But if I turn rollup off, you will get a familiar view of basically how most databases see the world, which is that you have a certain number of roll, rows and a certain number of columns. And some columns are numeric like these uh, and time is another numeric column. Uh, and some are strings, but basically one row in the input data corresponds to one row inside of the database. That's pretty natural, and you would do a count star to maybe get the number of rows you have. That's very cool, but you know, if you're trying to get performance, if you're trying to have performant queries and you want to be efficient about how you store your data, you might want to consider rollup, which will roll up some rows into one. And there's nothing that's more efficient in a database. There is no optimization that you can make that will produce a bigger impact than just storing less data. If you store less data in a database, it will be a lot faster. So right now I'm going to enable this rollup back up and let's start playing around with it. Now I've enabled my rollup. And what I see here is that I have some dimensions there in blue and turquoise. And I have some metrics. These are all going to be columns in the database, but this rollup action determines what, how they are computed. Now you'll see that by default, uh, it pre-selected all the numeric dimension, all the numeric columns to be metrics and all the string columns to be dimensions, but that doesn't have to be the case. You can easily have a numeric dimension, and um, it would technically be possible to have a string column, a string metric. Right here is a very important column. It's called count. It counts the number of rows that correspond to, to this row. Right now, the count is one for everything because I'm not getting any rollup. So right now, I'm actually, if I ingested this, I'll, it would actually be less efficient than if I ingested this data set without any rollup because I'm ingesting this extra column called count. Rollup occurs when there's two or more rows that correspond exactly in their dimensions. If they correspond exactly in their dimensions, instead of storing both rows in the database, we can store only one row and just increment the count and also aggregate all the other measures, that metrics that we might care about. Right now, I'm not seeing any rollup. Everything is one. But let's see what happens and why. I have a column here called diff URL. This data set corresponds to edits in Wikipedia, and these diff URLs are the unique IDs of each row. So no two rows will ever have the same diff URL. If you have a unique ID in your data and you ingest it as a dimension, you won't be able to achieve any rollup. I can click on diff URL and I can click on this red garbage bin and remove it. I'm still not seeing any rollup here. And this is actually 
a peculiarity of this data. It's actually, I would get roll up at this point. Um, it will just be very infrequent because this data corresponds to edits on Wikipedia. And right here, I have a dimension called page. And quite honestly, there's not that many edits that happen on the same page by the same user at the same time all at once. So to demonstrate the roll-up scenario, I'm going to actually remove page just because this is such a high cardinality dimension. In reality, I would actually get roll-up if I sampled more data than just the sample that I'm getting here. But I really want to demonstrate and make my point. Now that I've removed page, I can see that I'm starting to get roll-up. In fact, I'm getting a lot of roll-up on this row. This user, Kaliga2357, edited uh, in the main namespace uh, all of these things with these flags and made the same comment and did it at this time. And they did it 80 times. This is very typical uh, for bot activity. And depending on your data set, you might have a ton of rollup that you can get from it. If, for example, your data set is about advertising events, it's likely that the same uh, publisher uh, served the ad to the same advertiser in, uh, sorry, the same advertiser's uh, ad was placed in, by, on, the same on the same publisher's content on the same device with the same dimensions, so corresponding to all the dimensions you care about. Now notice here that since I removed the page dimension, I can't actually see what page these edits were on. And the reason I'm getting roll up is because I effectively lost that information or didn't choose to index it into Druid. Now that means that I won't be able to, if I just ingested this data as it is, filter on a specific page. Uh, however, uh, if I didn't care about that, maybe all I care about is the number of unique pages that I, that I have, I could add a metric and I could say I could have a unique page and I'd select a hyper unique aggregator and put in page. And I would add a metric that corresponds to a unique number of pages that uh, were edited there. This adds a, this, these funky metrics, their data sketches. Uh, they are complex probabilistic uh, objects that can be uh, interpreted and added up by Druid. And they can be used at query time to calculate how many unique pages correspond to this user's edits. They don't increase my rollup, however, and I still can't filter on a specific page, but it is some information and that's nice. Adding these metric columns expands my, it, it adds a column and a pretty thick one. Uh, and by doing that, I'm using more storage widthwise, but I'm still getting a benefit from the rollup. And you need to play around a little bit to see how can you get the most benefit while still being able to answer all the questions that you want. Another very interesting and important thing to consider is the time dimension. Really, any, kind of, any continuous dimension uh, measured with uh, enough detail will be essentially unique. Time is very special because you usually have a time dimension, so you almost always have to consider it. And that's where this query granularity comes in. As part of this operation, Druid actually truncates the time of each event to the query granularity. So right now my query granularity is set to one hour. And as a result, Druid truncates every time value to the start of the hour. That essentially means that I can't tell whether this comment was made uh, five minutes into the hour or 10 minutes into the hour. All I know is what hour it happened in. So I cannot query at a higher granularity than my query granularity. This is very important for all of but you can also adjust it. So let's say I go here and I say the query granularity, query granularity is none, which means don't truncate at all. When I do that, you can see that I'm storing the full 
value of the data up to the millisecond. And I'm not getting any rollup again. Because even though I removed the, um, the diff URL column previously, since, the, since so few edits on Wikipedia happen at the exact same millisecond as each other, I'm essentially not getting any rollup at all. This is acting as a unique identifier for each event, given this data set. If I, maybe I don't want to be this aggressive, maybe I want to set it to minute and truncate it to the minute. So now I can see that my events are truncated to the minute. And here these events are starting in minute two. These events are starting in minute three. If I look at my count, I can see I'm, I am getting a little bit of roll up on some rows. Like Kaliga is a very prolific bot. There's uh, some events for Kaliga here. And there's some events for Kaliga here. And I bet you that these events are used to roll up to the 80 when I had this set to one hour. Playing with the query granularity is very important because setting this too granular can really negatively impact your rollup. But obviously, you don't want to set it so high that you lose important information. I can set this back to one hour, and I'll get my nice rollup on some of these rows. Now, I'm going to ingest this data. I'm just going to call this data set Wikipedia Rollup Test. So now that this data set has finished loading, I can have a look at the different ways that Rollup has effect on how you actually query the data. So right now I can run this data set and make sure that it's all there. Uh, I don't have that page column and there's my unique page that I ingested before. This really corresponds to the preview you saw in the data loader. This is a select star, well, select all dimensions query. Now, a very interesting thing to note is that if I do, uh, if I do select count star, from from my data source right now this represents the raw count of rows this is the actual count of rows that exist inside of joy if i do so this is as raw count Similarly, if I do sum of the count column, then I get, that's the actual count. So as you can see right here, I have my actual count is 24,000. There's 24,000 rows in this that were ingested as part of this data source and are represented here but they're stored in only 16,000 uh, actual rows inside of Joy. And, and if I wanted to understand what my roll-up ratio is, which is kind of how much compression am I getting, I could just divide the two and remember to multiply by 1.0 to cast it as a, um, as a float. Fatio, ratio. So, Right now, with, with the changes that I made uh, to the schema, I'm getting a 1.5 roll-up ratio, which basically means that I'm getting this 1.5x compression on, on this data. And that is extremely powerful. This is very powerful, but in more optimized data sets that are more uh, likely to be rolled up, when there, where there's a lot more machine activity, you can see roll-up ratios as high as 20 or even 30. That's uh, not 20 or 30 percent, that's uh, 20 X. So uh, 2,000 percent to 3,000 percent. And the savings there are so significant that if you provision your cluster for rollup and then you maybe remove rollup for some reason, 
uh, maybe you start ingesting a column that has a unique ID. Uh, and remember, you can always do that. You can always modify your schema on the fly. Uh, you might actually run into some uh, issues where your cluster gets too full because you have provisioned it to have this data, that data set that's essentially 20x times smaller, and then you remove that. So what does that mean that, um, what does this count star mean? Well, what it means is that if you, for example, want to look at the uh, total number of added characters, I can do sum added and that would work. So I just sum a sum. Oh, and I spelled it correctly. Now, it is very important that I use the same aggregate as what was used to ingest this and why, and this is why the column is helpfully called sum underscore added. If I use a min here, I get, uh, well, uh, I get a zero, but it, or if let's say I use a max here, I get a max of sums. It's actually kind of a nonsensical metric. This really is a meaningless number. I don't know what it means. So you have to be really careful to use the same aggregate here as what was used in the ingestion. And it's good to have a consistent naming convention. The other thing is if I wanted to understand the average added, um, doing AVG, which is how you do average in SQL, is actually not that useful because AVG under the hood is just sum divided by count star that is what avg is and as we know this count star is actually not the number of it's just a, an arbitrary metric that just says how many rows they're actually enjoyed it doesn't correspond to anything in the data what you actually want is to replace this with sum of count and that gives you the true average the last thing I'll say is that uh, you know, as part of doing, uh, as part of doing that rollup, we removed page from the columns that we were uh, filtering on. So I don't have page here in a way that I can filter on, maybe to look at a specific page or to look at my top pages. That's a sacrifice I made to demonstrate the rollup example. But um, what I can do because I added this unique page sketch is I can do a count distinct on it. So that totally works and it gives me the distinct count of pages. So I still have that information and retain the ability to, to compute uniques, which is often why you want dimensions like unique ID. You want to see how many clients how many unique clients came to my site or how many unique visitors did I have? So in the actual Wikipedia example, if you really want to play with the Wikipedia demo, which we provide, you probably don't want to remove page and you might not even want to have rollup in the first place unless you're playing around with it. But in your real data, rollup could be an absolute lifesaver and it could mean the difference between uh, a 1000 node cluster or a 100 node cluster. Thank you for watching.